Hi, this is Tag again, and I think I discovered a new method to diagnose broken memory chips on GPUs. So first thing I had to do was to buy a box of random broken old school GPUs on eBay. So this is going to be part one of probably quite a few. And so let's get right into this and look exactly at what I got. Included the list, let's see. Quadro 2 Pro, something Matrox, X1600 Pro, uh, Radio 9600, uh, 7600GS. So, all of these are AGP cards, by the way, uh, except one of them is an ancient uh, ISA card, I think. So, we got two GeForce 4s, and they are mainly what I'm looking for, as well as the uh, 850 XT cards. So let's get this opened. You look like the 9600. And these were listed as missing parts and stuff like that. So general broken. Uh, here we got the cap. Now I'm not really interested in like just general easy cases with this. I'm more interested in actually broken memory chips on these because I think I have a method that is pretty re reliable to diagnose it. So this one seems to be missing. Let me zoom in. Seems to be missing. Uh, this is on the capacitor. But I see a bunch of scratches around this memory chip. So we're probably going to have at least some bad balls on these two top memory chips, I suspect. Uh, I don't see any missing resistors necessarily. And neither that, actually this one might be. Hope you can see it. This one might be damaged this resistor array. So yeah, what I was thinking is this is going to be sort of the unboxing video and then I'm going to do a couple cards each video and run you through the diagnosis of those cards and try to fix them. So this is the 9600. Actually, no, this is a Fire GL. This is a Fire GL 880. So this might be some sort, I mean, it's for sure a uh, Radio 9000 generation. So this might be something along the lines of a 9600 as well. In any case, it's 256-bit memory interface. This looks like some random MX something. Doesn't say Radeon something, TC50, so 5 nanosecond memory. I don't think this is anything that's valuable at all. Obviously someone tried to sort of fix this capacitor here already. So probably not this capacitor that's at fault. Usually capacitors are sort of not necessarily required. Anyways, at least not for getting a clean picture on post. Uh, stable operation is another story. So this is the 7600 GS. Now I think this one has a bridge chip and that's probably bad news for us because usually if EGP cards with a bridge chip are dead, then at least from my experience, it's the bridge chip. But there is some corrosion down here, so we might have a chance that there is something else broken on here. Okay, none of those were really the ones I'm interested in. I think this is the first package where something more interesting can be found. This is the X1600 Pro. Now, again, bridge chip. So, 
chances that the bridge chip is our issue here are pretty high. And a matrox. Now, this only has 3.3 nanosecond memory. I kind of like the matrox cards for salvaging memory because they are uh, some of the cards where you can find the highest spec memory. Uh, except for the GeForce FX cards, obviously. But those are really rare. So what we got here, get some really questionable solder jobs right here. See that? Uh, missing capacitor arrays. No. I feel like this inductor not being an inductor anymore might be a bigger problem here. But again, I'm going to run through those and test them at a later date. Now this is our Quadratru Pro, that's also one of the cards I was kind of interested in. Okay, we're missing a capacitor right here. That shouldn't be the biggest issue. Actually, mm, not sure if it's happy without any input filtering of the VRM at all. So, what does the back say? This looks really good. Okay, so... I have hopes for this thing, though it might be a bit of an issue getting off these heat sinks in case we have to swap my memory chip. Okay, what have we got here? A GeForce 2MX400. Yeah, that's just trash. This is better. This is a GeForce 3Ti of some sort. Great. Labels all scratched. I think there is some broken traces below this scratch label. Other than that, it looks reasonable. Okay, now this is the first GeForce 4, and it's a TI 4200 with the uh, TSOP memory. So I, I think I see a three poking out at the edge of this heatsink. Actually, uh, let's try to remove it. Pretty sure they're glued on there way too good. Yeah, don't think I can just get them off like that. There's no capacitor here. Can't see anything. Right, this is not in focus. Great. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah. We got 3.3 .3 nanosecond memory modules on here, which are probably the best or at least close to the best uh, TSOP package GD1 modules there are. So that's good. Worst case, can salvage the memory from this card to kind of tune some other cards and just memory swap them. But it's obviously a case for a revival. What is this? Ah, this is just ancient ISA card. I have absolutely no idea how to diagnose any of this. So, except that this definitely looks not factory. Uh, it looks to be some corrosion back here. So that might be part of our issue. Yeah, other than that, again, I have zero clue how these work. We'll just have a look at it for fun, but I don't think they're worth necessarily anything as well. So. 
that's fine. Okay, so we get 3.3 .3 nanosecond Samsung on an ATI card, so this will be our 9800 and uh, 9600, probably. Doesn't say anything on the PCB. Okay, we have a resistor missing here. I think that's already going to be our problem because this side of the memory chip has the uh, VREF and I think this missing resistor is part of the VREF divider. So basically VREF is half of the memory voltage and there should be one resistor towards memory voltage and one towards ground. And oh actually no, it's just capacitor missing. It's just different layout up here. Okay, so maybe that's not the issue, but I'm going to guess anyways that it's going to be something with this memory chip. Okay, you are a GeForce FX of some sort. TSOP memory means it's probably low and trash. Uh, four nanoseconds, what the hell happened to that? Come on, focus. What the hell did they do to that AGP slot? Like there is like, oh, yeah, right. The capacitor just sort of swipes away. They're soldered all across the pins. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go over that. Also, there is um, something that by layout should be a resistor. Come on. Focus. Come on. Some resistors missing here, so yeah. This might be also sort of beyond saving, especially because I don't think this is anything valuable. What does it say it under here? GeForce FX 5600, yeah. 5600 TSOP, 4 nanosecond memory, probably just trash. Okay. Finally, we got one of our 8500 XTs. So, let's see if I find anything obvious. Well, these are pretty decent AGP cards. Uh, <laughs> Don't see anything obvious. Now, obviously, could always be memory, which would be no problem at all because this should be GDDR free. So I'm going to find some sort of compatible memory for sure. Okay, there is one of the bigger ticket items here, I would say. This is a 4Ti 4600. That is in really poor optical condition. <laughs> I mean, no fan and yeah, everything was kind of loose. We got bad solder jobs again here. But yeah, basically these bad solder jobs sort of indicate that somewhere around those memory areas there probably was an impact and that ripped off some parts and likely damaged some of the balls of the memory as well. Now this is going to be a real challenge in getting off the seating. I'm probably going to have to soak the whole card in uh, paint thinner for like 24 hours to get those off. But yeah, overall doesn't look completely destroyed. Looks quite possibly fixable. And last card should be the second, oh, that's the X1950 Pro. No, again, this one is garbage. Can already tell. This one is just a parts card. Not sure if you can see it. There is a chip missing on the uh, bridge chip. So this can go straight to the trash, basically. I don't even think I need to test it, but it has a nice heatsink. So that's something. Anyways, I'm going to finish this one here.